Right. No joke. Did Sesame Street ever try to sue you? No. <laughs> no. Oscar the Grouch, we never had an issue with. But I'll tell you who did try to sue us. Gary Bettman in the NHL. No. Never, that, that, that well, you yeah. know what's funny? You bring Bettman up. We'll get into that story. But the, the, the league president who was in the documentary the whole time, bitching and whining, he thought he was getting it bad, getting some booze from Section 102, dude. Try being Bettman. Bettman's like, buddy, I'm getting fucking 20,000 booing me every time I well, go let out me, there. Let me, let me tell you something. You know, not a lot of people know this story, but, you know, so, you know, the first year was 04, 05, you know, the lockout year. And, um, you know, it was it was crazy. And, and we just like I said, I mean, we just kind of took off and um, we started getting some big press, though, for some of the craziness. Like I remember we were on the front page of the Toronto Star once we were disgraced to hockey. Um, so I will never forget. It was the off season going into the second year. We're sitting there. Me and my dad were sitting there and Phil Jubileo, who's our commentator and director of public relations, you know, all communication. He comes in and he's like, listen, guys, you know, I don't know how you guys are going to take this, but I just got this fax, you know, back when people use fax. And I, he gave it to me. I'm looking at it. It's got the, you know, NHL crest at the top. And basically, in, in layman's terms, they were saying that our name was too close to the Atlanta Thrasher's name that we basically we had to change our name. That wasn't going to happen. So we were like, what the hell? Like, why are they worried about? They just had a lockout and they're worried about the damn. They're worried about a trash can with a stick. You know what I'm saying? So we were like, well, how are we going to like, how are we going to deal with this? So me and my dad were speaking and uh, here's the deal. You know, if this turned into a legal thing, we were going to lose because it, they print money, the NHL. They could have dragged this out. We would have been screwed. So I said that, you know, I don't. We basically came up with, and Phil wrote it out and faxed it back to the NHL in so many words and legal terms. We, we said that we, you know, we understand you're upset, but we were willing, as a special exhibition, we were going to fly the Atlanta Thrashers to Danbury, and we were going to play them for the name. And we challenged them to play. And we, you know, I'm not saying Gary Bettman ever saw it, but they received that fax. And we oh, were, he we saw were, it. We, we challenged them. We're like, listen, that's fine. You want the name, that's fine, but let's let's play for it. And, uh, you know, listen, we would have lost the game. You know, they, you know that 1980 Miracle on Ice, we wouldn't have won that game. But we would have we literally gone down swinging because we were not going to just give up the name like that. And that's, Tommy, a, that's a, well, a big... Tommy Tebow and Papacello uh, w- would have made sure you guys did not lose that game. There would have been no goalie with listen, pads. It would have been very, it would have, and you know, it's not Atlanta's fault. And look, they're sitting in the same place we are right now. There, there's no trashers or thrashers. He was just mad but, you guys got better attendance. Yeah. Well, listen, <laughs> all, all I know is, all I know is, uh, you know, unfortunately that game never happened. That would have been insane. But uh, hey, it, it, that's a very true story. Hey, Biz, imagine a 20 year old Ilya Kovalchuk. First face off the the Nigerian nightmare <laughs> Roman Nadir smashes his face in. Dan Barry goes nuts. 